Season 2 of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous ended on a pretty big cliffhanger. After messing about areas of the island like Dr. Wu's lab, the kids from the show wind up setting loose a mysterious asset from a hidden room, known only as codename E750. Since this ending has everyone talking about what kind of creature this could be, I wanted to go over everything that we currently know about the Jurassic World canon and behind the scenes material from Camp Cretaceous specifically to come up with a few theories on what exactly is inside of this secret tube. So when Kenji accidentally enthaws whatever subject E750 happens to be, it opened the door for a lot of fan speculation into what was going to go down in Season 3. So far, all we really know is that this asset was so important to Henry Wu that he had set it up to run independently from Isla Nublar's basic power grid. E750 is shown to be still trapped in what appears to be a frozen chamber that was keeping it from unthawing should the park's main power ever fail. So whatever it is, it has to be a pretty unique and serious asset for the genetic to take these kind of precautions. Now, right off the bat, I want to address some of the more popular fan theories regarding Subject E750 first. Because in my opinion, these have the most believability for what we can expect to see in relation to the Jurassic Park franchise as a whole. A lot of fans seem to be under the impression that E750 is more than likely going to turn out being one of the other hybrid dinosaurs that Dr. Wu was working on during the events of the original Jurassic World. These hybrids are cleverly tucked away and not really dwelled upon in the 2015 film, but if you actually go back to the movie and pay attention to the computer screen that began Begins flashing animals for Grey to see, you will find a select few hybrid dinosaurs that were at the very least in the planning stages of development during the events of the fourth film. These assets include hybrids like the Stegoceratops, which was originally in the script for Jurassic World as well as a couple of other unidentified creations that bear a more theropod-oriented body type. Now, Vic Hoskins is currently in the middle of giving his speech on how the Indominus Rex would work better as a Indoraptor, which I've seen some people assume could be in the tube as well. But I want to point out that this would kind of negate the whole opening of Fallen Kingdom, where Eli Mills' men went down to get DNA material from the Indominus sometime later in 2016. So I don't really think the Indoraptor as we know it in the fifth film, would really be tucked away in this tube so far ahead of the Fallen Kingdom opening. Now, one particularly interesting theory that I wanted to bring up regarding E750 happens to be completely separate to everything that we've gone over so far. However, there is actually some material in Season 1 of Camp Cretaceous that I have seen cited as being relevant to the theory in question. If you pay attention to the first few episodes of the Netflix show, you can actually see Siberian mammoth remains being carted out of Wu's lab while the doctor is speaking to the kids. These woolly mammoth remains actually come from the extended Jurassic Park lore that has Dr. Wu in the middle of excavating Pleistocene creatures in the engine facility codenamed Martell. Because of this acknowledgement in Camp Cretaceous and because the tube for E750 is factually frozen, some people have interestingly suggested that this asset could be something similar to a Smilodon, or Sabertooth Cat as it's more popularly known. Personally, I'm not so sure we have enough evidence to jump to that conclusion just yet. However, I will say that the entire fact that the asset is frozen does leave a lot of unanswered questions for fans to mull over once Season 2 ends. Now, if we actually take a look at some of the concept art and behind the scenes material for Camp Cretaceous, we can actually see that at an early point in development, they had a lot of hybrid dinosaurs drawn up while preparing for the show. These hybrids came complete with DNA from various different species like Carnotaurus, Dilophosaurus, Sauropelta, Eutyranus, Diabloceratops, and Baryonyx. However, none of these unique designs ever really showed up in any of the 16 episodes that they've released so far. With that being said, the entire fact that Amblin and Universal went through the trouble of having new hybrid animals drawn up and prepared for the show would suggest that they, at the very least, were considering going in a direction similar to this at one point in time. And since we actually saw blueprints for new hybrid dinosaurs in the actual film Jurassic World, I'd say this puts further fuel on the fire for that idea to be a good possibility for E750. Now, if we don't talk about hybrids or prehistoric mammals, the only other idea that I've seen floated around by fans is that what's frozen inside of the secret tube could actually be a Spinosaurus that's similar to what we'd seen in Jurassic Park 3. Now, there's actually a new Spinosaurus toy made by Mattel that has Camp Cretaceous written all over it, and there is even a brief moment in Season 1 
where you can actually see E750 mentioned on screen as well. This is actually said out loud by Brooklyn while she's going over Dr. Wu's computer files that feature Spinosaurus, Velociraptor, and T-Rex skeleton models on a screen. If you look at the actual silhouette of what is inside of E750 at the end of Season 2, I will admit that it does look rather similar to something of a Spinosaurus snout when vaguely examined. And the final shriek-like roar that we hear in Episode 8 would suggest it's something of a monster and not necessarily a normal creature at all once we factor that into the whole situation. At this point in time, I think the actual reveal of what E750 is will be a pretty big thing to look forward to for fans everywhere. Whether it be a new hybrid, a saber-toothed cat, a Spinosaurus, or possibly some mixture of a few of those three, who knows. Personally, I think the idea of them actually bringing the Spinoraptor from Jurassic World Evolution into the show would be awesome, but if that's not what they're going for, my best guess is that it will be some sort of other new hybrid that we've yet to see. Anyways guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. What do all of you think will be inside of this frozen tube come Season 3, and what do you think this will mean for the Jurassic Park series going forward? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.